Hey guys, Will Terry here, and I can't believe this is video number 10 in my video series, How to Create a Money-Making Art Project. And if you've been following me on this video journey, I am working on a children's book that I am self-publishing this time. I'm not working through my um, the big publishers that I've worked with in the past. I am doing this one on my own, and I'm trying to see if I can make more money on my own than I do with getting money from my publishers. I will, in this video series, not today, but I will reveal how much money I usually get for a contract. So stay tuned. And as I sell uh, these books, I will share, in my last video, I shared the costs of the books. Um, in this, in future videos, I'm going to share um, how much I'm making, and I'll update those sales figures. I'll also talk about the sales that I'm going to be getting on Amazon. <clears throat> Every part of this journey, I'm going to be sharing with you. So with that... Uh, today, I want to talk about, um, yeah, the, the style that you choose to work in and, and some of the um, considerations there. I'm going to talk about uh, my book. I'm going to show some more art from my book. And, um, and, I, and today, I can actually reveal the name of the book because um, I do actually have it uploaded to Amazon, although I don't even know if I have any sales yet because it just barely got uploaded. Um, and the reason I want to share the, the title is, quite frankly, I didn't want someone to to somehow upload something with that name to Amazon and block me from with, with my own title. So now that that's uh, been safely uploaded, uh, I don't have the digital version up there yet. Still working on uh, some of the kinks, working out some of the kinks there. And uh, we'll be uh, making a separate video on uploading to Amazon in the future. So I will be sharing that. Um, but, uh, and, and also the fact that uh, if you haven't been following the series, I'm actually printing my own books in China as well. So I'll have hardbacks coming out of China that I will receive here. And then I have um, soft cover books on Amazon, uh, testing out their print on demand on um, the Amazon KDP. And I will make specific videos um, sharing that process later on. So today we're going to talk about um, uh, style. And I wanted to start by sharing with you... Um, some of my work, some of my earlier work. And so I'm going to pull in some pieces here. This was, this was actually, I'm just going to start sharing images. This was actually an image that I did. This is full acrylic paint. There's no digital in this at all. And this is actually how I used to paint. Um, and then I mimic that style in Photoshop. And one of my first digital pieces was this one for um, and you can see I'm kind of blurry on this. I didn't really understand how to um, hold my line as I was painting. This was for, um, um, I'm drawing a blank, on <laughs> Senior, Senorita Gordita. I can't even remember my own books. It's been so long ago. This, was, this book was probably put out like 10 or 12 years ago. Um, and then I started to kind of learn how to maintain line a little bit better and keep the digital going uh, as I was working. And I ended up on kind of the what I would say is a peak of that of my digital style was looking something like this here's a little bit more recent image here and this is my full uh, color trying to mimic my acrylic style and then um, and this is all gonna kind of factor in and I'll talk about some other books that, that other people have done as well but then um, I started to work I'm gonna go ahead and click out of this into uh, right here. Um, let's share some of my work that I did for my um, little little heroes um, line that I sold at comic conventions. So I was doing this like crosshatch style and um, just kind of trying to make really fun characters and, and selling those. And I, I the reason I I kind of switched over to the style is I was I was just doing this, um, at this point I had an office um, in, in Provo, Utah, and because I couldn't get to my office, I couldn't paint in Photoshop like on the weekends, and I was primarily doing these on the weekends. And so because of that, I wanted a style that I could completely do on my iPad. So I just started rendering them down like this. And there's other reasons that I, I at first I, this line was just gonna be black and white. And so most everything was black and white with like a touch of color. And I didn't need Photoshop for that. 
because uh, I wanted to stand out at comic conventions. But that this style, I'll get rid of some of these tabs here, kind of let it lent itself to being asked to work on um, this book called Bonaparte Falls Apart. I don't actually have a cover here, but this is like the title page right here. And you could see um, this that same kind of cross-hatching style. There's actually, uh, it's really small when you look at the book, but there's a flaming po uh, bag of, like paper bag of dog poo. This is my, this was, <laughs> A friend of mine challenged me to put that in there, and I'm like, I'll put it in there. The, I don't think the editor will mind or will know what it is, and so it's just in there. <laughs> but anyway, um, yeah, so just kind of uh, working in this style, and then all of a sudden I ended up with, I had two different styles that I could work in, and I, I really liked this style. The editor liked it better than my other work, so then I ended up with two styles. So in working on... Uh, Pickleball Paul, that is actually the name of my book, uh, my new book that is, uh, I don't have my hardcovers yet, I won't have them until um, March or April of this year, but um, if I look at, here we go, um, here's some of the art from that book, some of these you've already seen if you've watched some of my other videos, um, and the same, same kind of style. So I chose this to work in for Pickleball Paul for two reasons. One, I feel like this style is more current. I really trust um, the the editor that actually she was a creative director that, that chose me for um, Bonaparte. Bonaparte Falls Apart. And um, it's, it's, it's more of a current style. It's more, I think, representative of what, what's going on in... The children's book world, the fully rendered stuff tends to look more like animation. And the children's book editors just really seem to be steering away from that. So the fact that I'm self-publishing this book, I really wanted it to feel like it fit in with what was currently be, being done in the children's book space right now. Um, I'll share another one that I haven't shared on here yet. Uh, this is a scene. And of course, th this is just the art from one side. Um, it's not the double page spread, but um, it's part part of what's going on in the game and um, of pickleball that they're playing in the book. But um, yeah, so I didn't want to I, I didn't want to use my more colorful style. The other thing is this style is faster. I can illustrate in this style probably in about half the the time that it takes to to do a um, one of the the more fully rendered colored uh, pieces. And so it, it actually helps me make more money. I mean, time is money. I can get this, I can get a book like this completely drawn and sketched out in about a month to six weeks. And the coloring takes about a week for, for all the images. I can get them all colored. I, if I had to, I could get them all colored in about two or three days. So it's, it's really a, a quick style to work in much quicker than my other one, much um, probably a longer style than than some people work in and there's some shortcuts so like if I zoom in on this piece um, the the line work that is done you know like like on the character here on Paul this is Paul right here the fox um, the back of him maybe I'll oh no, there's the back of him and um, so this so the, so all the cross hatching or the the hatch work that's done on the character and the paddle and stuff right here I did for the book but all of this back here this this is a sheet of texture that I'd made once and I use it for every page I just put it on a multiply layer I erase it where it's too heavy and I just uh, keep it where I want it I turn down the opacity on that layer and I can slam that texture in there and um, it's consistent with my texture because I created it um, and it just works with with the with the artwork I don't, uh, some people say, well, why don't you do like process videos on your channel and do like um, demos and stuff like that. The reason that I don't do it on this channel is I've saved this channel more for um, like a business uh, advice channel, um, you know, like how to become an illustrator. Um, and I want to keep it consistent with that. I've got all my process videos at svslearn.com. And um, actually right now, I just need to tell you really quick, our prices are going up at the end of this week on 
the 22nd of January. So this is 2023. Of course, if you're watching this after that, our prices have already gone up. But we have about a week before our prices go up and you can lock in the subscription rate today um, and keep that grandfathered in as long as you have your subscription. So a lot of people are jumping in right now um, to lock in the lower rate. So anyway, that's why I don't do process videos on my channels. I've got all my classes at, at SVS Learn. Um, and um, so if you want to see how I'm creating um, this style and the other style, I have classes there that, that cover that. Um, so that's kind of how the two styles that I have evolved and, and the, the ones that I have to choose from. Now I have books. Um, let's see if I've got this one. Um, most of my books were done like skeleton for dinner was done in the, the other style where it's more, um, more fully rendered, more, more, um, saturated color and less, um, drawing texture. And I still have clients that would prefer this style. So I still work in that style, but it does take longer. And, um, I, I do feel like it's a little bit less current for the, the current, um, children's book market. But I do want to talk about, um, what other people, what styles other people are working in. And um, for that, I wanted to highlight an illustrator who I actually, kind of a friend of mine, um, more of an acquaintance, but kind of a friend. I actually slept in this guy's basement next to his, next to his heater, <laughs> his furnace, because there wasn't, he didn't have much room. And, and me and a couple other friends were staying at his house um, to go to, uh, in Chicago to go to, a, um, a convention for, um, children's book, uh, ch children's books. And, um, he offered to let us stay there, but Eric is a Caldecott, uh, award winner for my friend rabbit, which you can see right here. Um, and one thing that he does is he invents a new style for almost every book. So, you know, he's got these different styles. Um, I didn't really want to go out to this page, but, um, you can see this is this, my friend rabbit and the bone dog seem to be more of a, like a line, like he's representing a line cut, um, like a block cut, um, uh, linoleum cut kind of a style. Whereas he's got like fully rendered, um, style right here. He got an honor medal, a Calicut honor for this. So he is a big shot in the uh, children's book illustration world. And look at his really super simple style here for Bulldozer's Big Day. Um, and so so he, um, you know, takes the time to really work hard and, and try to figure out um, new styles for almost every book. There's one, uh, his Oh No book here. I was actually, that's when we were staying at his house when he was trying to figure out how he's going to, illustrate in this style and it's totally different from the line work is totally different from the other ones um so what he's each what is what he's trying to do i think is he's trying to match the style to um the 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 feel of the book right so if you have a book that's more conventional you know my pickleball book is more conventional i'm not going to do a style that's really wacky and way out there and um you know and and but it is me, it, you know, it fits me. Um, and it's kind of what comes out, what, what I naturally like to do. Um, Eric is, is able to, I think, be influenced and, and look at a lot of different artwork and go, you know, if I could invent a style that's maybe a mixture of this, that, and the other, I could put it together and it would fit the book, fit the manuscript better. Um, his wife is also um, Candace Fleming, so he illustrates his wife's books. Um, they get to work together and they probably collaborate on that to some extent. If I was doing it more of a fan fantasy book or something that's completely off, you know, wacky, I would probably want a style that is um, more reflective of that. Um, uh, if you're doing nonfiction, you probably want something that's a little bit more grounded and, and standard. Um, and it's hard to put words to to some of these styles, but if I look at like, I just did a Google search for like popular children's books and you can see some old ones here and some new ones, some, some ones that you, that you might've grown up with. I know there's some here that I grew up with, um, some that I read to my kids, but, um, there's some styles that I believe would be totally inappropriate for certain books. Okay. And then I think that there are styles, there are many different styles 
that could work for a book. So you sometimes if you go to an SCBWI conference, you will hear editors saying, well, we had to find the perfect illustrator for this manuscript. Well, I think that that sometimes can be true. I think sometimes you do find the perfect um, illustrator and you can't imagine it any other way. However, we don't also have the the alternate reality to see what would have happened if it, if a specific manuscript had been illustrated by a different illustrator. I do know that um, editors often have make a list of illustrators who have very different styles for a, a particular manuscript that they have bought and are going to publish. So they buy the manuscript. There, it's on their you know they put it on their schedule of when they want to publish it, and then they go and look for an illustrator. Um, and they have their number one pick, number two, number three, number four, number five, and hopefully, and sometimes they can't get any of those guys or gals because they're busy and they get turned down by all of them. So then they have to go to the number six, seven, eight, and who knows how many they go to. Um, if the book is a success, does it mean that the previous ones would have been a mistake? I don't think so. I tend to think that um, a lot of books could could have come and done really well with different styles. However, like I said, I think that some um, probably are the perfect fit. There's sometimes you can see videos from like videos on YouTube that um, they'll say, "Well, um, you know, check out the actors that were um, offered this role first, You know, and you see the list of actors, and you can't possibly imagine it being done any different. Because my theory is because the book did so, or the movie did so well that it became you know, like a standard icon in the movie industry. And of course, anything else at that point is going to feel foreign, but it doesn't mean that another actor couldn't have also owned the role. Um, sometimes we can't possibly picture someone else doing it. Other times, I think we don't hear about the movies that kind of flopped and who also was offered the roles and, and been able to go, oh yeah, it would have been better with, with that actor, you know, um, so take it for what it's worth. There is a book that is showing on the screen right now that I think, I'm not going to point to it, but I think the, the franchise did extremely well. The author and illustrator have probably made millions of dollars off of this book series over the course of the books. In fact, I know they have. Um, and I can definitely picture this book series being illustrated by a number of other illustrators and having it be very successful or as successful. I do not think that the illustrations made the book series. I think the writing made the book series. It was such a creative idea and it was going to do well with or without the particular illustrator that was chosen. Um, so it's, it's an interesting, um, it's an interesting topic to talk about style because it is so subjective. Some editors I feel put, more emphasis on it than need to, than it needs to have, but again, that's part of their job description. So, why would they say, "Yeah, my job's not that important"? Of course, they're going to say their job's important, right? They get to pick the illustrator. So it's a it's kind of a fascinating discussion. But what I would say for those of you who are trying to think of um, what illustration style you should work in, um, it. It has to be something that you love doing, first and foremost. Um, if you're, you know, I, I don't know how Eric does it, quite frankly, to invent a new style. It works for him, and that's part of probably why he gets up in the morning is he loves to experiment and to try different styles. I, I'm not that, that way. I like basically the two styles I have, and I don't have an itch to, to go further at least not right now. That doesn't mean I won't have another style or two um, in the future. But right now, I am totally satisfied and love the images that I make with uh, the style that I use. Some illustrators have one style and they become very famous and have um, you know, had a great career just on one style. And it's just what they do. And they, um, if they're not writing, if they're waiting for you know, uh, to be hired by a publisher, then basically they just wait for the publishers to find manuscripts that they feel are perfect for them. And those are the manuscripts that they choose out of and they're, they're happy working that way. If you're writing um, a book and you feel like your style doesn't match your, your writing, you could be 
you could be right on, spot on on that. And it could be, and I've known illustrators to do this, where they have, a few, have illustrated a manuscript that someone else has illustrated. Even though they could have done it, they felt their style was wrong for their own writing. That doesn't happen very often, but it has happened. Um, and um, I think that that takes a lot of courage to to write a book and and then step back and say, this needs to be illustrated by someone else. Um, so those are kind of my thoughts on style. I'd love to know what you think. I'm always tickled to see um, what people are writing in the comments. And I would also say this, um, there are there have been a few um, questions in the comment section that I've um, taken note of and written down to include in future videos because uh, people have written um, questions that I wasn't planning to answer in this video series, but um, I'll draw from the comment section as I go on. I'm going to keep this video series going through selling the books. Um, uh, I think I mentioned last time, if I haven't, I'll mention it again. I'm already writing my second book, um, uh, Pickleball Paul book, and plan to make it a series of three, maybe even five books, um, depending on the demand. So this is something that I've, I'm fully committed to. I'm all in on and uh, love sharing my journey with you. Again, leave a comment, leave a question, and uh, I'll we'll see where this thing takes us. And uh, uh, please do not subscribe to my channel unless you want to see more stuff like this. Um, I never subscribe to channels that I don't like. And when people say like, comment, share, and subscribe, and click the notification bell, I'm like, I don't really like what you're doing. So no, I'm not going to do that. So don't subscribe unless you want to see more stuff like this. And I will see you on the next video.